Poco F3 was easily one of the best budget Android phones of 2021, but now Xiaomi has followed up with the Poco F4. What's new? And is it worth the upgrade over what was one of the best budget flagship devices in recent years? Well, let's find out. Thanks for watching 95 Google here on YouTube. Remember to thumbs up, hit subscribe, and then tap the bell icon to be among the first to watch our upcoming videos. So the Poco F4 certainly does not look and feel like a Poco phone in the traditional sense. It's boxy, it's light, and dare I say it, it feels slightly cheap, at least compared to last year's Poco F3. As expected ahead of release, the Poco F4 ditches the ergonomic look and feel of the F3, and it is practically a carbon copy of the previously released Xiaomi Redmi K40s. In the hand, the F4 certainly feels marginally or at least a little bit hollow compared to the dense and softly curved F3. Looks and aesthetics aside though, these two devices are practically identical across the board, at least internally. The display is also effectively the same, so too is the processor and the battery capacity. Xiaomi has opted for a tried and tested approach here rather than offering the latest Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 in favour of the Snapdragon 870. It's uh, likely going to be the biggest disappointment for fans hoping to see a return of an out and out flagship level Poco phone. For the latest and greatest chip, you might want to therefore look at the Poco F4 GT which is more gamer focused. Both phones come with flat Full HD AMOLED panels with a 120Hz refresh rate they both have 900 nit max brightnesses with 1300 nit peak brightnesses. It's identical on both devices as I mentioned, and it's every bit as impressive as it was thanks to a pin sized punch hole in the central position along the upper borders of the F3 and the F4. Elsewhere, the colors have actually been slashed from just four to two. If you do value aesthetics, I would say that the Poco F3 is arguably a much more visually appealing device, at least compared to this newer version. I think one of the problem areas for any Xiaomi phone in recent years has been in its software update speed. A case in point is the Poco F3, which has only just received the Android 12 update. However, due to Xiaomi's odd build numbering system, Android 12 is based upon MIUI 13. And I think this is a confusing naming convention, but at least you do have the most widely available version of Android ready to download if you haven't already done so with last year's model. The Poco F4, as you'd expect, launches with MIUI 13 atop of Android 12, and this includes all of those new privacy controls and enhancements added with the stable release. Day to day though, it's hard to tell these two devices apart, at least in terms of look and performance, and the fact that you can actually run MIUI 13 across both handsets is a big bonus. Xiaomi has packed its third-party skin full of functions and features, including what I would consider a neat sidebar access for quick app selection, but the addition of virtual RAM expansion might actually help long-term performance levels right across the board, and I think this might be my favorite MIUI addition. Because both devices, as I mentioned, utilize the Qualcomm Snapdragon 870 chipset, there really is little that you can't do on a modern Android smartphone here. Gaming performance is great, as is the software fluidity, given that MIUI is a substantial overhaul over AOSP. On top of that, although Xiaomi has not provided us any concrete details, you probably will get a maximum of two full OS Android updates on either handset and then potentially three years of security patches. Xiaomi's Angus Ng has also said that the firm is trying to strive for three or four updates as per its own schedule. It is worth noting that this is not a direct outward confirmation, but we are hoping that updates are going to be part of a wider agenda for Xiaomi moving forward because it is one of the few sore points. The fact that the Poco F3 did start with running Android 11 immediately puts it at a slight disadvantage, at least in terms of updates, but that gulf could increase as the Xiaomi continues to push updates at a pretty slow pace now that the Poco F4 has arrived. It's genuinely hard to determine just how long Xiaomi will actually push updates for the Duo, but the Poco F4 being the latest model, it would be hard to argue that it will be updated at least for a longer period. And we are hoping for Android 13 and then potentially Android 14 within its lifespan. Looking at the tail of the tape in the battery stakes though, the Poco F3 does slightly edge the Poco F4. In reality though, this 20 milliamp hour difference is really negligible. We're talking about 4,500 milliamp hours on the Poco F4, 4,520 milliamp hours on the Poco F3. In terms of real time battery life, it's going to be very, very minuscule and you can achieve a full day of lifespan with ease. 
but when it comes to charging, there actually is a distinct advantage in favor of the brand new handset. Although you do get a charger in the box for both phones, the Poco F4 has actually stepped up to 67 watt fast charging for the first time. This means that you can go from zero to 100% in under 40 minutes, which is about 30% faster than the Poco F3's 33 watt charging. Sadly though, there's no room for wireless or reverse wireless charging on either option here. While the Poco Phone series has never really been particularly camera focused, the F4 provides some important improvements in both optics and options available. A bump to a 64 megapixel main sensor is a notable one, but the addition of optical image stabilization means that images and therefore video should be even better than they ever have been before. The ultra wide and macro cameras remain identical across the board, but the selfie camera sensor has made the switch from a Samsung ISO cell sensor to a Sony IMX596 sensor. It is tough to tell if there are any major improvements, but both selfie cameras offer identical 20 megapixel maximum resolution images. Because MIUI 13 is also available on both handsets, the camera feature set is now identical too. You can utilize things such as dual video modes, add filters to your videos using the vlog mode, and even use a TikTok inspired short video mode that limits clips to just 15 seconds. And I think that extra one is the perfect way to quickly grab videos and share them directly on social media platforms. Overall though, the camera stack on both devices is fairly comparable, even though the Poco F4 has a slight advantage, at least with that brand new sensor. And overall, this just really sums up the Poco F4 and the Poco F3. There are really many negligible little differences. And in many ways, they are practically the same phone, but in a slightly different chassis. You'll need to decide if faster charging and a marginally better camera setup are going to be enough for you to consider upgrading from one to the other. Although the changes overall are relatively minor, it doesn't actually hugely diminish the Poco F4. It's still a great device for those shopping on a budget, and it's definitely one to pick up if you are one of those people. It does lack some of the punch that the Poco F3 had when it released last year, and it does showcase just how packed the budget Android smartphone space is, at least at this stage of 2022. I want to ask you though, I'd love to know what you think. Do you think that the Poco F4 is an upgrade by your own metrics? Let me know down in the comment sections below. Really interested to see how people feel about this, seeing as though it's more iterative than ever before. But until next time, this is Damien with 95 Google saying thanks for watching, and I will speak to you later.